Hi, everyone. Uh, we are very excited and happy to be connected with you all today for this important panel um, aiming to talk about how uh, technology um, applied to the field of agriculture um, can help uh, Africa to, to develop and um, to be at uh, the edge of, of uh, the new technologies and also tackle important issues like um, food security, but also life of soil and health of soil. And to discuss this uh, very important topic, I'm very delighted to have with me two experts in the field. Uh, and please um, uh, be very happy to be with um, two important persons. The first one is Dr. Shadrach uh, Quadro Ponsa. Uh, is a, he had a PhD and uh, is also a research scientist, a lecturer and specialized on agricultural um, mechanization. Welcome to you, Shadrach. Thank you very much, Karima. <laughs> we also have the pleasure to have with us uh, Sir Benjamin Guan Kese. I hope I pronounce it very well. <laughs> That's a good try. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult, you know, because I'm French, yeah. Moroccan, and with an English accent, <laughs> uh, so it makes it a little bit complex, but I hope I, I made no offense to your name. That's uh, right. And so, uh, Benjamin, you are uh, the, direct, the director of Cosmos. In order for us to, to, um, to, to discuss, what I, I would like you to do is uh, to give each of you some 10 minutes. I think it's really important uh, regarding what you are doing for you to have the chance to explain what is your organization about, what is your specialization, who you are also, and in which country um, you, are, you exercise. Um, you are based and you, you cover also in Africa because I think it's very important for uh, the people listening to us to have the scope of your expertise. And then we could um, um, enter a conversation um, and hopefully if we have some time, um, we, we could have some um, questions and answers from, from the public. So uh, for the people on here, um, please do not um, do not fear to to share with us your questions. We have a great moderator with us, and he will uh, share with us your question, and we could answer it after all. So um, let's start with you, Dr. Chadrak. Uh, can you please uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, what you are doing, your expertise, and your organization? Okay. Thank you very much, Karima. Um, I guess you can hear me well. Yes, we do. Okay. Perfect. Um, Shadra Kojong Ponsa is an agricultural engineer by profession and training, and I'm specialized in agricultural mechanization, uh, specifically machine design and fabrication, agricultural machinery assessment, post harvest engineering, and aquaculture engineering as well. Um, I have been in the research and academia for the past uh, 12 years. Um, I had my studies part in Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology from BSc through to Masters. Part of my Masters was in Sweden, uh, Swedish Agricultural University, SLU, Uppsala. And also part of my PhD was in K University and also in uh, Benin, uh, Kutunu, and also in uh, Senegal. I would say I've traveled wide with uh, most of my research. I've been researching also in India uh, oh. on some cassava harvesting implements. Um, I'm a registered member with the Ghana Institution of Engineering, uh, GHI in Accra, and uh, currently work with the Council for Scientific Research and Industrial Res uh, uh, Research, uh, CSR, Crops Research Institute where we are based in Kumasi, from Oswa to be precise. Uh, I also do part-time lecturing in agricultural mechanization with the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology uh, at the Agricultural and Bio Systems Engineering Department. Um, so far, my desire has been to actually develop and disseminate 
demand-driven technologies, agricultural technologies for that matter, to help the rural farmers mostly. I say rural farmers because they happen to feed the majority of us in the cities. They do so much work and I see that we owe them a lot if we have to uh, get the best out of our agriculture production in Ghana. Uh, so far, uh, I think I'll say these ones for now and then leave the rest as and when we are talking, maybe I can chip some of them in so we don't spend so much time on my introduction. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Shadrach. It, it was very uh, helpful also to, to understand your, your expertise. Um, yes. Benjamin, can you uh, talk a little bit about you, introduce yourself, but also explain us what, what is Cosmos about? Right. Thank you very much, Karima. So uh, I started uh, you know, with the rudiments of agriculture by helping my father, who uh, is a retired accountant now, build his farm and learn from him and then started to study agriculture. In the past, I, was also, I also helped my father build um, fresh orange juice um, cottage industry where we were processing fruits from our farm and selling onto the market. So we we're very much commercial. Later on, I moved to um, start a small yogurt cottage, yogurt um, industry myself and kind of paid my, my, supported myself through college with the proceeds that were coming through the, the processing of the, of the yogurt uh, at that time. And through that, um, I, after that, at some point, I decided to take formal employment. And I worked with TechnoServe and later became the head, working with Wienco Cocoa Agrobopa Association, supporting and leading the team to train over 50,000 cocoa farmers in using appropriate technology, adopting um, entrepreneurship in agriculture, adopting group dynamics to see how they can use that to reduce labor, um, the hard labor intensive and also the scarce labor um, resources that they were not finding in their communities using the group dynamics and group work to um, enhance their productivity. And then um, later on, I moved on to work with uh, a company called Isoko, which is quite known in the Eastern African countries and also in Western African countries as well. So I worked with Isoko in Ghana as a development manager, business development manager trying to help farmers understand the technology and also getting them to buy technology. And as we go on into this conversation, we'll try to talk about how farmers are seeing technology, whether they are willing to buy and how um, it is important when you talk about deployment, which the Shadrach mentioned a while ago, disseminated how important it is to make sure you have the right strategy. Now, I am working with Cosmos Innovation Center now and Cosmos Innovation Center it is um, a corporate social investment program set up by Cosmos Energy, which is an oil and gas company. The company that discovered oil the first time in Ghana in commercial quantities. And Cosmos, as part of its um, DNA, and wanted to uh, invite their own entrepreneurial skills into the countries that they work in. And therefore, they decided to come up with a program where they would find young people in Ghana and teach, train, teach them how to solve problems while they make uh, economic gains. So you're fixing challenges within your country and you're making economic gains for yourself and for your family and improving your country as, as, a, as a goal. So that is what Cosmos Innovation Center is and it, we've been around since 2016 and we have trained over 500 young entrepreneurs and we have helped create over 18 startups and currently we have 16 startups that sit in our incubator and our startups ranges from mechanization, um, services to farmers, uh, soil testing, poultry, and it cuts across the whole value chain. And as we go on, I'll talk more and more about these um, companies that we've helped create and the young, amazing young people that are, being, that are behind these um, companies um, for, for the years. So for now, this is what I can tell you about Cosmos University is focused mainly on grooming young entrepreneurs and helping them bring the best out of them to create solutions and fix problems and make a commercial value for themselves and their countries. 
Thank you very much. It sounds very interesting and I think you can share a lot with us later on on the conversation about what are the key success factors to to um, to encourage young people, but also what are the main struggles they can encounter in, in the world. Because I can see and hear you have a lot of in enthusiasm and, um, well, there is numbers for you, so you can tell uh, what you achieved. But it's also, I think, very important to tell the story of things that didn't work to understand where are the struggles. So it seems for the moment that we lost maybe for some uh, some 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 minutes, Dr. Shadrach. But let's begin uh, with you and and continue the conversation, uh, Benjamin, and enter directly the the subject. So the idea is also for us to understand um, how can, uh, from your point of view, technology or agriculture technology help Africa become more sustainable. So you you tell it a little bit um, uh, in your in your um, in your um, presentation, and we learn from what other um, continents have done not so good. That is maybe using too much pests or overlooking on on resources such as water, um, such as the the soil. Hey, Dr. Shadrach, happy to see you again. So we were beginning the conversation and we started we will start with Benjamin and the question was how can technology help Africa become more yes, sustainable? I, I yeah, yeah. So it was about how can technology help Africa become more sustainable? And so both from of course economical point of view, that means how can we will really make sure that um, a farmer can make a, a a good living and and good living from his work and um, but also from a, a CSR point of view that mean how we can make sure that we we apply and technology can bring more um, security and for the soil using less pests uh, a better use of water maybe a better understanding of climate change, that kind of, of things. So in your point of view, let's begin with you, Benjamin. How can you see a technology or what are the examples you have in mind to make sure that or to, to, to tell that technology can, can be really an ally um, for Africa's sustainable um, future? Right. Thank you, Karima. Um, very important technology obviously it's a way to go if we want to be a sustainable continent we want to be able to feed ourselves educate ourselves provide good health to ourselves and also understand what is happening around us to make very good decisions so technology is really the way to go but how to do it and maybe some examples that i would like to share um during this present part of the presentation uh, would help so like I mentioned, technology would help Africa be sustainable, and we can look at education. I mean, with the current um, COVID-19 is presenting a lot of opportunity, a lot of challenges and opportunities at the same time. And look at how education is being challenged in Africa, globally, actually. But in Africa, I can talk about Africa for, this, uh, for the purpose of this conversation. How are we um, leveraging on technology to still keep our young ones who are in school educated? And for many institutions or, or schools that I have had conversations with, the actors are saying, and also I experienced from Cosmos Innovation Center, the e-learning platform is now providing a, a lot of opportunities to bring in a lot, many information, bringing in diverse um, content that helps students to appreciate uh, subject matter better than previously. Also, you get the opportunity to leverage on other experts who ordinarily you could not even fly them into your country, but get them online to pass on information knowledge to your, to your students. And we are benefiting from that in our Cosmos Innovation uh, Center program. When you look at agriculture, which is my, my passion, 
agriculture and technology are the way, the, the way to go. I mean, for agriculture to move to the next level, and you talked about climate and others. For instance, uh, how, how would a farmer know um, how to, when to plant? and whether the weather conditions would be favorable in a particular season. And so we're talking about climate smart agriculture here. So with technology, we will be able to provide a lot of information to the farmers that is timely and helps them make the right decision. And now technology, previously most farmers may not get this information, but with companies like Isoko, Aware, Total Agriculture and the likes, the farmers are now getting these technologies. Like the farmer lines are now able to translate into the local language of the farmer what the weather readings are and what actions they should be taking. Should be taking. Technology is also helping translate crop protocols to farmers. So farmers are getting to understand when and what to produce and at what intervals to apply um, pesticide, weedicides, and at what intervals to do your withdrawal so that your, your chemical residues is at the barest minimum for the consumer. So technology is helping us. And in that, it translates into how health is also, agriculture is affecting health. Because if the farmer has all these information and is able to use it very well, then it helps the farmer to produce the right food at the very, with the barest minimum of chemical residue that will not affect the health of the consumer. So technology would help us to be able to protect ourselves. When you look at health, for instance, it is very important that health, uh, agriculture, uh, what called technology is, is, is in health. With COVID-19, and as I, mean, I talk to a lot of startups, a lot of startups are seeing opportunities on how to come up with new health products. Currently, there is a company in Ghana, I think it's an American company, but it's been in Ghana for a while, and it's called Zipline. I'm sure you may know Zipline. Zipline, until COVID-19, has been helping the Ghana Health Services to send vaccines um, to communities that hitherto would take hours and days to reach. But Zipline is able to reach them within uh, three, four, five hours and whatever it is needed within the communities to save someone's life, it is done. So technology, it is really part uh, and parcel of us, and that is going to help Africa. I can talk about waste management. I can talk about many things. And we have two companies from the Cosmos Innovation Center that was used, that is using technology to also help improve on how we can manage waste, agricultural waste. AgroPlus, that is trying to turn cassava and planting waste into into um, f uh, f uh, plastic, so biodegradable plastic, environment friendly. And agro sourcing that is turning waste into other products which that cosmetic industries can use. So technology really plays a very vital role for the sustainability of Africa and its development. Thank you, Benjamin. You make a very important point. Um, um, uh, uh, helping us understanding how data is key and how technology also can help collect, organize and make easy to use data ab about agriculture, crops, how to, how many, how, how to do um, pest uh, decision making and precision making. And also a very important point is the link between all these decisions and this understanding of data with the health and i can imagine both the health of people and the health of soil but it would be very interesting i think um if if you dr shadow um uh, could of course build on that but from your scientist point of view i think also what would be great is to understand um, how also um, maybe uh, Africa is playing a role in this collection of data? Um, how how do you see things? How how can we make sure that um, let's say there is African data as well, and how we can organize in Africa this data which which is the key of things? So maybe it's a more specific. Um, question, but of course, please be free to to add and build uh, what you have on mind about this 
this role of technology helping Africa being more sustainable. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Karima. I think when we talk of sustainability, we are referring to keywords like cyber, we are talking about preservation, we are talking about continuity, and you realize that most of these technologies that we, we are talking about uh, are geared towards first of all, ensuring that as far as agricultural production is concerned, we have improved yield, we have improved efficiency in our work, and also improved profitability. I would want to just zoom in and to talk about what role technology in agriculture is playing with reference to agri-tech or agrotech. When we talk about agri-tech or agrotech, we are talking about agricultural technologies that have been used over the years. It started not long, not, in fact, it started not, not now, it's been in the system for a long time. One thing that I always say is that Africa, we have been more or less at the rudimentary stage with respect to mechanization. I want to bring in some physical aspect of farming when we talk about agricultural mechanization. And with respect to our form of agricultural mechanization, we realize that Africa is still languishing at the bottom. We are still using rudimentary tools to, uh, you know, grow, and thereby you find out that farmers are always shifting. They farm this land this year, next year they are moving to another land, assuming that we all know we don't have any other land anywhere. It's the same land we are working with. And you find farmers having to move every year to different fields so that they can improve upon their production. And then biotechnology coming in with GMO and all that improves seeds and then agro inputs, improve methods and techniques for farming so that we can conserve the land. So it's all coming into sustainability. As far as research and data collection is concerned, what we've been doing as researchers is that we try to, in my field, whenever we are, we are looking at a machine, for instance, uh, they bring a machine from China. We want to use this machine to help farmers probably grow uh, or to sow their seeds. We, first of all, have to evaluate and assess the machine to know whether it has any impact on the And then also, we want to look at, in terms of sustainability, how are these farmers going to get access to spare parts? These are all issues that come into the adoption. I think uh, Benjamin knows much about these things because he has been in the field. You see, we, we have a challenge. I initially said, let me just bring in a little education here, that we have three levels of mechanization. We have the, 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 the rudimentary stage, and then we have, that's a basic level of, of, of mechanization, and we have the advanced stage which uses highly sophisticated machines to help these farms to be able to produce. And we have what we call the intermediate technology. The intermediate technology. And unfortunately, that's what we have not been able to do so much uh, with uh, as far as Africa is concerned. What most economies have done is that in their quest to help farmers improve upon their production, uh, they, they import these sophisticated machines, some of them, these are combined harvesters that 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 will harvest uh, about a hectare in an hour, you know, and so huge requirements when when it comes to uh, uh, technical uh, uh, assistance. You ask yourself, what is the education level of these farmers that they bring? Mm. Most of the time. It's so sad to go to the northern part of the country where you see a, a, a pool of abandoned tractors, abandoned combined harvesters, abandoned. It, 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 it's pathetic, you know. And this is because the government thinks that to be able to help these farmers with technology, we need to bring in machines from Asia to help them. So it's like jumping from 2G and you go to 5G. You know, yeah. you have not yet understood. The, the intermediate connections that go with it. So you, you've not gone to 3G, you've not gone to 4G to understand and, and to be able to better relate with 
the technology, and then you are moving to an advanced level. So most of these mechanization attempts by these um, uh, uh, governments across Africa has failed because of this. We have not been able to tap very well our own intermediate as aspect of the technology that we are talking about. What do I mean by intermediate technology? For instance, if you have a farmer who uses a catalyst to, to, to sow, to sow maize, you, you know, it, 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 it means that there's, there's more drudgery involved. The farmer would spend so much time on the field. So you see a farmer doing the manual planting and transplanting and all that. At the end of the day, you would expect that a farmer would be able to harvest and harvest timely. The timely harvest of the rice is very important as far as post-harvest loss uh, reduction is concerned. Yeah, so I think, I don't know if you can hear me, Dr. Shadrach, but um, somehow you freezed. Um, but let me... Um, the, 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 that could do the work faster. And it's an improvement upon technology. You freezed a little bit, but that let me let me maybe sum up and put it on on the yeah. nutshell, and maybe you you I, just. I, begin. I hope you can hear me now. Yeah, can you hear me? I hope can. Yes, yes, I can hear you. So, good. So somehow we lost you for some seconds, but let me let me try to um, reformulate a little bit what your 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 very uh, interesting um, inter intervention put as key ideas. And actually, it's a great in, in it's a great transition to the question two, which is what is the place of technology. Um, in agriculture in Africa, and so you just begin to give some um, ideas. But what I, what I take from from your your intervention, thank you very very much because you you build on what said Benjamin by completing uh, with the the yield, the efficiency, and the the, the economic part of the of sustainability, understanding that uh, managing well technology, it's also managing well the yield. And thus, making more sustainable um, uh, the agriculture. But then you you also said, uh, let's ma make clear that the technology is more than a machine. It's a machine, but also an understanding of how it works and in what stage um, is the population in uh, being able to use select the right machine, and also the understanding of how crucial it is to have the right machinery or technology at the right moment because in a crop sometimes you have like one week um to make sure that you have to harvest to have the best the best revenue it's like you're working on a field for six months but then you have only 10 days to harvest and make uh, the best out of it and sometimes not having the right understanding and the right competencies to use the technology you you lost it um, so, which brings us a little bit, and uh, let's skip with you, um, Dr. Sadrak, on this second uh, point, which is the place of technology in agriculture. You just begin to give us some info, some um, keys about education, about understanding the levels. But then, um, how how can we overcome this? Um, how how can we? Should, does that mean, in your point of view, and then Janine, I would like also um, your point of view on that. Does it mean that we should do more um, uh, technology that is made in Africa, or um, do you see some um, opportunities for this middle, or for this middle um, stage we are talking about, which is not that much advanced, but still they are in there. So how do you see things? How? How should we should we see evolution of of technology um, in Africa? And if we if we can maybe um, yeah, if you can build on that, Dr. Sharak, for for ten to six minutes, then we can also uh, hear Benjamin on that point, and hopefully we will have time to have the the two other questions. The problem has been that we have less confidence in ourselves as a people think that we need the, the Western people to come and solve our problem. It has been that challenge. So every now and then, even when a Ghanaian develops something, I know some people are doing well. You know, Cosmos Energy Innovation Center is really doing so well. I'm so happy 
with how, what we are doing to help agripreneurs be able to come up with wonderful ideas. I, I, I would like to hear also um, Benjamin on, on this and uh, um, the, 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 mod, the moderator is also telling me that we, we only have 10 minutes left. Okay. Um, um, but it was uh, passionate. I'm, I'm okay. sorry. But Benjamin, would you like uh, please to, to comment on this place and how do you see the, the progress on, on technology in Africa? And also maybe to conclude just a few words on how, how if you believe uh, that uh, agri-technology agri -technology can bring back uh, young people to to agriculture and considering um, uh, agriculture as really uh, um, a very innovative and passionate um, area to, to, to grow. And just thank you very, uh, very much, Dr. Shadrach, for all your elements. And I really loved the fact that you shared that there was so much things and great initiatives in Africa, made in Africa, and that we should definitely build our confidence on that and go uh, go ahead and and um, and yeah celebrate our innovative mind and how we can do so please benjamin maybe you can comment please right thank you very much karima and uh, good good stuff um uh, shadrach so i'll try to build on what shadrach has said um so far and he said something which actually is the main part of the reason why Cosmos Innovation Center exists. He talked about the fact that students build, write great projects, they build products are part of their thesis to graduate, and then it ends up on the shelves. If you have spent that much time to do this kind of research, to build a product, to write all these research papers, to graduate, to get your master's, your bachelor's, your PhD, why can't you take it to the market? And that is where, where Cosmos Innovation Center comes in. We try to whip up the energy, the passion in young entrepreneurs to look at this and see that this is solving a problem as much as it is also bringing in revenues to you. So one of the biggest challenges, um, and we try to solve it through a particular part of our program we, we dwell so much on is market research. For example, when a young person or anybody wants to build a business, most, most of the time what we see missing is market research. Has research gone into this? What does the market need? For instance, so whilst we're talking about farmers, and Shadrach talked about moving from a 2G to 5G. What would the farmer need moving from the cutlass to the tractor or to the swine harvester to the, to, the, to the harvester? This needs research. This needs someone who is able to gather data from farmers and see what is there, what they require and what they can afford to buy and what will bring productivity. So when we even started a program, sometimes initially we are more so, uh, so much um, stuck around the software bit of the of agritech, but we soon learn that we need a blend of software and hardware in Africa to move African agricultural technology ahead to a point where the farmer becomes so sophisticated that they are needing more software. So. That, that, that is what we are aware of. So from the 2G to the 5G, I agree with Sadrak, and this is what we're trying to do with our youth and in, in this. And trying to talk about some of the innovations that have come um, through our program, for instance, we have a company called Quedex that is a crowdfunding tech platform for farmers. Focus on last mile financing, agri-financing where most commercial banks are running away from these startups are now coming up with technologies and algorithms that helps to select the right farmer, select the right person who also wants to invest in the farmer. So now we are getting agri-finance going through an agri-finance platform in technology in this, in this way. And then we have um, other, other, other um, he, uh, Shadrach mentioned Tech Shelter. Tech Shelter actually also in a small area, improving even in the green housing um, technology itself. 
and they have added a business model to it. So what I always want to say, and I think I started when I started my presentation, I talked about commercial because to get young people into agriculture, you should also let them understand that it's a place where they can win commercial. And you should be able to let them see the numbers. And once everybody is seeing the numbers, the motivation is there. You're doing a social good by what you've been able to do, but you're also making ends meet for yourself. It means that you're not going to go bet anyone. So in terms of knowledge, yes, we have a lot of knowledge here, but turning that knowledge into practice, into sustainable business, and not ten, making it an NGO-ish business, that is what it needed, and that is what Cosmos Innovation Center is here. And I can tell you a few success stories, and I'm sure uh, Shadrach would know a few of them. We have a company called Tractor Tractor. Tractor Tractor is very basic. It is like um, Tractor Tractor, like Uber for tractor service, so for mechanization. A farmer wants their land to be plowed, they send a USSD number. Uh, to a, a USSD code to, a, uh, to their platform, and then a tractor is arranged to go and plow, harrow, and cut produce from the farm. It's as simple as that. So that is one of the pl platforms that we have. We, and I talked about Quidex earlier. We also have a company called Profit that is currently linking the tilapia farmers or seafood, for, uh, seafood to, uh, to the uh, consumers taking a lot of the burden from the farmers around marketing and logistics and all of that. And they are using e-commerce e platforms to do all of this. So I believe, because of time, I will not speak so much, but I believe strongly that if we place technology very well, and that was also the, the belief of Cosmos uh, Innovation Center, that if we are able to marry agriculture and technology, we will be able to drive in a lot of young people to see, to be interested in agriculture. Agriculture can become funky, it can become sexy, it can become attractive for them to say that this is the place I want to be. And I can tell you for a fact that since Cosmos Innovation started in 2016 in Ghana, and other young people seeing the process that they go through, the kind of education they get, a lot of young people are now turning into agriculture. Now, if you look on social, if you go to social media in Ghana, you're seeing a lot of people talking about agriculture. Come COVID-19 this year, late last year into this year, Many people are looking for opportunities to make extra income. And now many people have started talking about agriculture. And agriculture now, because they are talking about it on social media, it's a technology platform that they're using. They are thinking that they can use social media to even do trading in agricultural produce and others. So once we are able to really uh, bring the examples of good businesses in tech, and also harnessing our technology. I believe it is a way that we can pull in a lot of young people into agriculture because food security in the coming years is going to be very, very important to Africa. And Africa actually, at the current situation globally, we are really positioned to receive the rest of the world. And Thank if you. we are able to position, if we are able to pull in young people, then Africa is going to be important. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Benjamin. Thank you very much, Dr. Shadrach. I really appreciate it being with you for this hour of discussion about how agriculture, how technology can um, can really nourish agriculture and build a sustainable future for uh, for Africa. I learned a lot uh, from you. I learned that um, technology is, is has to be think as software, but also mechanism. Uh, and mechanical level, uh, a lot is still to do, but a lot have been done. There is a lot of creativity, already best practices, success stories to find there and to duplicate, but that the market and the route to market is definitely key to achieve this. And of course, the COVID and the crisis show that this is today. If somebody has to choose a moment to go and to build um, um, uh, 
a business on agriculture, this is today. We need it. It is needed. It is It is very sexy and desirable. There is plenty of things to do. And um, it is also for, for the best of the world, for the soil and for the people and the health of people. And thank you very much to, for, for you both to have been with us. And I hope that the audience appreciated as much as I did. And thank you for TAG um, also Campus to offer us the opportunity. Thank you very much. We are ready, ready to close.